Uh, today we'll discuss the rubrospinal tract. It is one of the key pyramidal, uh, extra pyramidal uh, motor pathways, uh, which will help in controlling the upper limb movements. So rubrospinal tract gets its name from the red nucleus. Rubro meaning red in color. So this pathway is very important for uh, facilitating flexor movements in the upper limb. So the tract originates from the magnocellular part of the red nucleus. So red nucleus has magnocellular and parvocellular part. From the magnocellular part, this tract arises. So where exactly is this red nucleus present? In the midbrain, we have a canal which is called uh, aqueduct, right? So just behind the aqueduct, this area we call it as uh, tectum. So in front of the aqueduct, the area of the midbrain is called as tegmentum. So in the tegmentum of the midbrain, we have red nucleus. So from the magnocellular portion of the red nucleus, this pathway arises. And immediately after leaving the red nucleus, the fibers will cross to the opposite side. And that decussation or crossover, we call it as ventral tegmental decussation, otherwise called forels or anterior tegmental decussation. And remember, Rubrospinal tract controls the contralateral side of the body because of this decussation. After crossing, the tract descends on the descends through the brain stem and then enters the spinal cord. It, it travels very close to corticospinal tract. So that is why whenever there is a lesion in the corticospinal tract, some uh, this partially this tract will partially compensate for the damage of the corticospinal tract. And this terminates on an interneuron. Interneurons in turn terminate on alpha and uh, gamma motor neuron that supply the upper limb muscles, especially the flexor group of muscles. So the main function of this rubrospinal tract is it will increase or facilitate the flexor muscle tone. So in the upper limb, whenever you stimulate the rubrospinal tract, the hand blows goes for flexion. So how is this clinically important? Okay, this uh, pathway. It is very important to understand the decorticate and de uh, decerebrate uh, posturing. So, see now, you know, red nucleus is present in the midbrain. So, if there is any lesion above the mid, above the red nucleus, rubrospinal tract will remain intact. So, the flexors will dominate and the upper limb will be in a flexed position. But if the lesion is below the uh, red nucleus, the rubrospinal tract is damaged, right? So, if the lesion happens below this, the rubrospinal tract is cut. So, what happens? The hands and all will go for extension. So, the extensor pathways will take over. Uh, because this is damaged, the extensor pathway mainly what we are referring here is vestibulospinal tract. So, that will cause decerebrate rigidity. So, remember red nucleus is mainly important for fl causing flexion of the upper limb. So, if the flexion is not there in case of any head injury, that means this pathway is cut and extensor pathways have taken over.